Are you recording now? Branch. 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 Branch, Branch out. A podcast from the Royal Botanic Garden, Sydney. A whole bunch of different chemicals and uh, different healing attributes are based on plants and we're now starting to investigate different types of uh, chemicals that are contained within plants that might have uh, properties from a point of view of mitigating cancers or, or controlling things from that perspective. Hi, I'm Vanessa Fuchs. We're at the Royal Botanic Garden in Sydney with Dr Brett Summerall, Director of Science and Conservation. Next year will be Brett's 30th year working as a scientist here, and today he's taking us into the garden to check out an incredible tree. It contains a poisonous chemical that might actually save lives. It's called the black bean. Look at the black bean. Yep. It's huge. Yeah, yeah. No, they're a gorgeous tree. They, they're really, I couldn't even put my arms around it if I tried. No, it is. It's a gorgeous tree. It's a lovely, lovely component of the landscape here. And what are the properties of the, the black bean? That um, so there's been a number of chemicals that have been discovered in them. Some chemicals that are quite in of interest from a medicinal point of view and castanospermine is the, the chemical that's been used has um, some interest from a point of view of uh, cancer but also in HIV it's been used from that perspective looking at seeing whether the, the chemical in it could be um, effective and efficient in terms of killing the HIV virus. You look through any any person's um, medicine cabinet or their their um, bathroom cabinet, you'll see a whole bunch of different materials that are, are that are plant derived. So whether it's something as simple as tea tree oil or tea tree creams, through to eucalyptus oil, which is a fantastic antimicrobial, aspirin, all of those things are, are derived from different species of plants. And then you've got, of course, the famous um, chemicals that are being produced by fungi, uh, and the most obvious one and the most important one from that perspective is penicillin, which is coming out of a a, a blue mould penicillium that was discovered by accident during part of the World War II um, research in Cambridge. And if you look at plants and look at the biochemistry of plants, there's a whole bunch of chemicals that they contain. Some of them are the basic chemicals that are essential for life for, their, for them. And then there's a whole range of very strange and interesting chemicals that we some people call phytochemicals, some people call secondary metabolites, all sorts of different chemicals which over a period of time have been associated with being able to heal or mitigate or work on different types of diseases uh, in strange different ways. So what is the function of a secondary metabolite in a plant? Like what does it normally do? Oh, in some cases it may be a hormone that um, regulates growth or the, you know, its response to different environmental parameters. In some cases it may be a defence um, chemical that it has to prevent infection by disease or attack by different types of insects. Um, and in other cases we, we still really don't know what it is about those plants and those chemicals that uh, are so important. We've we really got a lot to to, to still understand about what all these chemicals do, what their role in the plants, and then also what their role on other organisms that may interact with those plants over that period of time. I find it strange how this chemical in a plant is designed to potentially, like not always, but sometimes harm a predator, but then it has that opposite mm. effect in us. Like what, why? <laughs> why? Um, it, all, it often comes down to the dose rate. So you'll find, you know, let's put it in, uh, in terms that people might be f more f familiar with, you know, in terms of Botox. The botulism bacteria, if you have it at a certain concentration, it will kill you. If it's at a lower concentration and you stick it in above your eyebrows, you'll get a very smooth face. So it often does depend on the concentration. A perfect example of how important it is to fine tune the dosage of toxic plant chemicals is the black bean. Yeah, when it's when it's full of fruit and they're dropping, you can see the see the fruit up there. What colour is it? It's Where? dark. It's a green on the end of the branch hanging down. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I do see it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, there's quite a few up yeah, there. Yeah, it looks like a giant like edamame snow bean yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, snow yeah, pea yeah. thing. Yeah, but you don't want one to land on your head because they're no. they're quite heavy. You know, half a kilo or so. Oh my god! If you eat the the fruit, flat, um, you know, fresh. They can be quite toxic, so Aboriginal people had developed a, a methodology for uh, leaching out the chemicals, various chemicals out of them so that they could then grind them down to produce sort of a flowery substrate, which is quite good from a point of view of, as a carbohydrate source from that perspective and a, and a protein source. 
Amazing. Yeah. yeah so. It's really multi-purpose. Yeah, yeah, you it is. You can eat it. You can turn it into a potential drug. Yes, yeah. So, and it's a beautiful tree. It's huge. Yeah, yeah. So where does it grow? From Cape York in Queensland to the Bellingen River in uh, northern New South Wales. So it's it's a very tropical species. You also find it in places like Vanuatu and and uh, New Caledonia. If you can get the concentration of something that's acting to kill an invading organism, you know, at a particular dose, they will stop that invading organism dead in its tracks. But if the dose is low enough or mitigated in some way so that and then introduced into a cancerous cell, then it might be enough to stop it, that cell dividing or to kill off those specific cells without necessarily having an impact on the surrounding cells. It's often about the dose rate. And how do we find these plants? I mean... I, I'm imagining like field work and, and getting out there is so important. And what do we do at the, the gardens here? Field work is critical from that point of view. We need to get out in the bush uh, as much as we can in order to uh, collect the species, um, document them, um, provide all of that background information that can be then used as a critical component for understanding what um, uh, chemicals might be discovered or be able to be discovered in the future. If you don't know what's there and if you don't have names on those plants, then uh, it's really difficult to be able to go the next step and look, start looking at the chemistry and what's, what they might, what possible role they might have in terms of from a, a biopharmaceutical perspective. So our role is to get out there, document them. Um, we think in Australia that we've still got about 15% of the flora to discover. You know, let's say there's 25,000 odd species of plants um, documented in Australia. If you work through the numbers, that means there's there's still quite a lot of species, you know, 3,700 odd new species to be discovered. We need to discover them before they go extinct. Once you get out of the cities and some of those sort of regional areas, we we there's still a lot of stuff to be found out in those areas. And we still find discoveries in our collection. So, you know, if somebody somewhere in, in 1890, some, 90 such and such, whatever it is, may have gone to a particular area and discovered this species, took a cutting, took a, made a specimen, it's in the collection here. Um, and it's not until we have the, the resources and the people to actually properly look at that, that particular specimen do we know it's a different species. So sometimes that happens and it's, it's not unusual to, for that to happen. The collection Brett keeps referring to is the 1.4 million plant specimens kept at the National Herbarium of New South Wales. And our seed bank curator, Graham Errington, got some pretty surprising news a few months ago. There was a collection that I made 20 years ago on the south coast on this isolated mountain and it's only just recently that somebody's gone back to look at that. At the time that we collected it, it was this disjunct population of a fairly common species. And somebody's actually gone back and compared that specimen that I made, that I collected, to all of the other specimens of that species and it's a separate species. So Completely. it's been yeah. And it's actually critically endangered. This is just about to be listed as critically endangered because it only occurs on that mountaintop on the far south coast of New South Wales. To document new life is the key thing that does drive a lot of us here at the Botanic Gardens. And to be able to describe it, to be able to give it a name, to publish it and so that it's contributing to the greater sum of knowledge for, for a whole bunch of organisms is a really, really um, rewarding thing and a really important thing from that perspective. And sometimes you might name it after somebody who's helped you in terms of collecting that. So, you know, I, I had one that I collected on a field trip that my son managed to find, so I, he brought it back and, and said, is this one any good? And I said, oh, yeah, it might be. And so you know, that one ended up being um, Rita Riella, which is the existing genus, but Patrickii, which is named after him. So oh, it does depend. So cool. It was, yeah. It, that's really sweet. It, is, it was very nice, yeah. Thanks for listening to Branch Out. Next episode, we're going deep into the microscopic world of deadly plant diseases. Plant diseases have the, have the potential of causing literally billions of dollars of crop losses every year. So it's very important to actually get on top of plant diseases. If you want to know more about how world-leading scientists are developing solutions to the world's most critical environmental and biodiversity issues, Search for the Royal Botanic Garden Sydney and follow the links to our science page. You can subscribe on any podcasting app and please leave us a rating or a review if you like the show. 
it helps more people find us. I'm Vanessa Fuchs, and I produce the show with Miles Martignoni.